if you've come to this video, I congratulate you. If you've managed to go through the six lessons so far, there's a good chance that you guys will start getting to grips with the idea of what it's like being a trader. Now, if you are a new trader and you're coming into the game thinking that you're going to make a quick buck and go, it's just not that simple. Today's lesson, the battle to close a losing trade. And before I continue, you know what's coming. If you do like the channel, subscribe. I don't even like saying subscribe, so we're going to change it to join. So if you're new here, join the channel so you can catch up with what's going on and what it's like to be inside a trader's reality. Have any of you actually ever experienced the battle to close a losing trade? Do you understand what it means to be looking at your account, depreciating, reducing in balance continuously during a trade, and you're there just watching it absolutely numb and not able to do anything about it? This is something that I experienced so many times. I mean, I would go and deposit 10 grand and two days later, I would be in a position and my account was negative 50%. Do you understand what that does to your trading morale? Guys, if there's one thing that I tell you, it's never have an opinion. All right? Here's the problem. When someone says, in my opinion, or, yeah, quite frankly, in my opinion, you get it, okay? When someone puts out an opinion, what they're really saying, right, is they're subconsciously trying to get you to agree with their ego, all right? They're trying to get you to agree with their fact of reality. Look at the wording. In my opinion. Already you're saying to someone, what I'm about to tell you is fact because my ego, my way of thinking, my reality of things and my interpretation of the way I see things sees it as correct and it's fact to me. But I'm saying opinion to be politically correct or better use of the word, you know, I'm just putting my points across kind of thing. Now let's jump into the idealism of trading. Having an opinion in trading is very detrimental to anyone. Why? Because an opinion is defended. And what does defend an opinion? The ego. It's the ego that controls your response to things. And this is why the battle to close a losing trade happens so frequently with traders because they are defending the idea that they're wrong. They can't come to the, they, they can't accept it. They will not accept that they're wrong. And they're defending their decision. They're defending the fact that they placed this trade because they've done the analysis, because they've done this, because it's irrelevant. Traders that lose so often or traders that put themselves into a position where they're struggling to close a losing trade is because they're defending their opinion about their trade. You can't have an opinion. You never knew where price was going to go, which means you should not have an opinion of it. All you're dealt with once you're in a trade is what's going to happen to my account if and that's all you need to be asking yourself set your risk parameters be happy with what you're going to lose for that trade and then be prepared for the next trade i said it to you in my last video when i place a trade i'm already looking at where to get out this is the defense mechanism this is what protects my balance by always looking for the next opportunity. 
whether the position's in green or red, if I see another situation where I know I'm going to be able to at least make a few pips from it, I'm out the trade and I'm ready to open another one. There's the saying, good traders cut their losses, great traders change direction. You've probably seen in some of the videos that I've been posting on the live trades, you'll see several times that I've taken a few losses and then changed the direction of the trade. And I explain to you what's going on. That's what, you know, when you're trading smaller time frames, you've got that flexibility to actually be a trader. If you're a swing trader, mm, swing traders, they buy and they hold, you know, you're pretty much an investor to me. To me, that is. That's not my opinion. I'm telling you that to me, you're an investor. You put money down and you wait for a period of time. A trader is someone who's in and out continuously trading. You know, scalpers, they are in and they are out. They are trading back and forth. It's a continuous movement. When you come to a situation where you are stuck when it comes to closing a trade, you have to literally look at the screen and tell yourself you are wrong. Get used to being wrong. Learn to accept rejection. If you want to know what rejection is, go and be a telesales Go and make cold calls. That is rejection at the highest level. Imagine being told 250 times a day, no thank you, stop calling me, I'm going to report you, I'm not interested, are you trying to sell me something? Imagine being told that 250 times a day, every single day, five days a week. It does something to you. You start to accept the rejection. And then all of a sudden, you're starting to make lots of telephone calls and you're starting to book loads of appointments, make loads of sales. Why? Because you've come to accept that rejection is part of the game. Losing is part of the game in trading. Why would you allow yourself to hold a position that is against what you're practicing in terms of your risk management? The trade is clearly wrong. And the time that you've wasted holding the trade in the hope, <laughs> hope that it's going to return somewhat and reduce the balance on your account to be closer to break even. <laughs> Guys, don't do it. All right. Don't burn your capital all for an idea that's at the back of your mind, which shouldn't have been there in the first place. Remember. When you place a trade, your cards are down. There's nothing you can do. All right. The only thing you can do is close the trade. That's all you can do is close it. You can't adjust the way the market behaves. You can draw as many indicators as you want to solidify your conviction of you entering in the trade in the first place. You can try and, you know, pull up Fibonacci's. You can try and get Forex Factory loads of information to justify you staying in this trade in the hope, <laughs> in the hope. I laugh at the word hope because that's what happens to a lot of traders. The first thing that you're thinking when your account is so damaged from one single trade, you're hoping that it's going to go back to normal. You're hoping it's going to go back above that entry point. Hope, hope, hope. Guys, we haven't got time for that. If you're going to come into this game thinking that you're going to go for these home runs and do these cowboy trades, you're going to get cowboy results. Do yourself a favor. The moment you place a trade, accept that you can't do anything about it. It's done. See it as a trade that's closed. You can't do anything. It's live. But all you can do is close it. That's why when you place a trade and it's live, looking for the next opportunity is going to allow you to detach from the result of the existing trade. This is why I trade the smaller time frames because I've got the luxury of saying I'm wrong, I'm out, next trade. 
Imagine a swing trader. Imagine a swing trader waiting three days for a pattern to develop. He places the trade, his account's at negative 25%. And he spent three days trying to work out this pattern and he's putting it in his head thinking, yeah, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. It's gonna go in my favor. I would have read the pattern correctly. Bullshit. You gotta wait another set of time or a week, four or five days, whatever. And the problem with a lot of new traders that come into the game and they start as swing traders is they're very hesitant. They don't want to sit and wait for the next pattern. They think to themselves, I just wasted three days for this position to play out and it's already put my account negative 25%. What the fuck is that? And then they think, oh, you know what? I'm not cut for this. This isn't right for me. I don't like it. I'm out. There you go. Another statistic. Another trader adding to that percentile. 95 percent 96 we're gl getting closer and closer all right come to the acceptance that you have no influence of any trade that you place once it's live the only thing you can do is enforce your authority onto it by closing it that's all you can do and if you struggle to close a losing trade then you need to come to accept certain truths. Is this game cut for you? Are you in a position to bleed money? If you're happy holding a losing trade, go and give your money to someone in the streets. Go and donate it somewhere where at least you're gonna get some general, you know, good feedback from it. You're gonna get the good karma. If you come into this game, having an attachment to a trade. I promise you, you will be forever depositing. I was lucky. I got sick and tired of continuously depositing. I needed to get used to the idea of withdrawing. Do you know what it's like to withdraw after losing for so long? When I withdrew my first thousand pounds, I, I just broke down because I was like, wow, I did it. I withdrew a thousand pounds. It hit my bank account. For all the years that I've been trading, all I've been doing is looking at that balance right in the bottom of the left corner on MetaTrader. Continuously looking at it going up and down, up and down, then zero. And then for me to withdraw money, it was, oh God, like... It was a euphoric state. It was at that moment where I started to become consistent. Because I liked the idea of being able to take from the market whatever it was giving me. I focused more on the execution as opposed to the money aspect. It was a process. Withdrawing and depositing are processes. And I focused more on withdrawing. The problem with new traders is they're too focused on being right. They're too focused on trying to make a quick buck. No attention to withdrawing. No attention to conserving the balance. Protecting the capital. The last video we talked about protecting our, bat, our, our, our capital. Are you the bodyguard of your capital? Now, don't get me wrong, guys. When you're negative in a trade, it is a difficult time. But that's where your stop loss comes into play. Where if you are happy to allow your exposure to be at a certain level, great. Allow it to get to that level. Don't move it. Don't adjust it. Don't pull up Forex Factory and look at the news to see if there's any information that's going to come out in favor of dollar yen or, you know, Aussie dollar, whatever pair you want. These are the things I used to do, and I can guarantee a lot of people do do them. They try and create this self-fulfilling prophecy that they're at some point going to be correct with this trade. And the irony is the moment you close the trade, you're instantly looking at trying to get in again. Well, if you take that same mentality before your account was negative 50%, you probably would have a lot more money in your account. 
so you could then effectively go and earn more. You've got to understand as well, what I'm saying to you, yeah, it's easy for me to say it to you because I've experienced it. And there are days where I do get caught in between trades where I'm like, right, I should really close this right now. Why am I not closing it? And then I just snap out of it and I just bring myself back to the times where I would literally just allow my account to go to zero. There'd be conversations in my mind where I would say, oh, this is going to go to zero. This is going to go to zero. Come on, margin, hit margin. I want you to hit on my account. Margin, please hit. Bang, there's margin. Bang, my account's gone. These are the sort of conversations I would have with myself when I was trading in the formative years. It's unbelievable. Looking back at it now, I'm thinking to myself, shit. There are so many people that probably behave like this. But the problem is, those people that experience that are more prone to quitting the game and just putting their money elsewhere or trying another endeavour. Trading is all about accepting the rejection. If you can accept the rejection that comes with trading, like the telesales, there will be a time when you get into the flow of things and then you'll start understanding that with acceptance of rejection, you're then ready to embrace the consistency. Don't allow yourself to be exposed to these treacherous battles in your mind, whether you're trying to defend your opinion, ego, you're trying to prepare, um, pr protect, you know, have you told someone to buy dollar yen or sell Aussie dollar? And you want to protect your opinion so you look good for your friends. You know. When you're trading it's just you and the market. No one else. You are in control of absolutely everything that you do. Not what the market does. Everything that you do. So my advice to you guys is this. If you're in a circumstance where... You are effectively married to a trade. Cut the trade. It doesn't matter whether you're down or whether you're just going to barely break even. It's okay to be wrong. Because that's what makes the traders consistent. They accept that they can be wrong. The guys that continuously lose are the ones that don't accept or should I say, take the responsibility of being wrong. They protect an opinion. They protect their ego. Who gives a fuck about your ego? When it comes to trying to make money in this game, you have got no time to have an opinion about insulting your intelligence because you studied three days in a row for this pattern and you want it to play out. The market owes you nothing. Remember that. And you know what the messed up thing is? No matter how much money you put into the market, it won't matter because it will always be there the next day. There will never be a certain amount of money that you can put into this market that will make it change because you did your homework on waiting for a bullish engulfing pattern to play out or, you know, or harmonics to kick in and, you know, waiting for a Fibonacci play. The hard truth about trading is it is this brutal, guys. And the sooner you come to accept this, the more, the more you start to build calluses, you know, when someone goes to the gym and they're lifting weights, they build these calluses in their hand, you know, and then their hands, the skin in that area becomes tougher. I speak to you in this tone because I'm trying to save you a ton of money. Alternatively, you can go and piss the money away if you want and then come back and ask me a question on how to get yourself over a certain obstacle. Just play this tape back. Play this video back continuously. Let it resonate in your mind. You'll notice that some of my visuals in my video, they start in the first two minutes of the video and then they just stick with a screen. The reason being is because I'm trying to envision my viewer. What is my viewer going to be doing? 
Are they going to be traveling home from work? If they are, the only thing they're going to be focused on is what's in front of them if they're driving. Or maybe they're on a bus. Maybe they don't want to actually pull their phone out. Maybe they just want to have it tucked away. They just want to hear it. So you could say that this YouTube series is effectively like a podcast. I'm trying to get into your minds, guys, so that you understand, all right? Trading is not, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's not a fantasy world, all right? You're in the pits, man. You are in the pits. You are up against the greatest minds and you're up against the biggest enemy, which is yourself. Only you can fuck up. And only you are responsible for you. The market will still send price to the upside and it will still send it to the downside and it will start ranging. That's the guarantee I can give you. I can give you this one guarantee that the market will always be there. Will you?